Hello, fellow truckers, and welcome back to Euro Truck Simulator. Uh, we're continuing our career mode here, and uh, it turns out that, just like in my American Truck Simulator video that I just did, uh, the load that we're picking up is in the exact same spot that we dropped off the last one. So, let's go ahead and get backed up into this. We're heading to Cologne in... I don't know how you say it. Cologne in Denmark. I don't know if it's pronounced Cologne or if it's pronounced another way. I'm an American. I don't know European pronunciation. I don't know your European pronunciation for things. So hopefully you guys will forgive me. And yeah, so this is a 228 kilometer drive. So ideally this is going to take a little bit of time. And this video will be sufficiently long to justify the time that you, that you uh, spent investing in it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just, you know... By the time I get to the, by the time I get to this video and then my uh, American Truck Simulator video, sorry, I'm just I'm trying to keep track. I know I'm looking back and forth a lot, but I'm trying to keep keep an eye on what traffic is doing. Are you seriously going to stop in front of me? What a jerk! All right. Um, by the time I get to these videos, my brain is pretty well scrambled by this point, and I'm just I'm just kind of randomly saying stuff now. <laughs> so. Uh, I don't know. Maybe some of you will enjoy that more. I know for me, I, I don't necessarily enjoy it more, but whatever. <laughs> uh, okay, hold on. What's going on here with my head tracking? Let me recenter it. There we go. All right. Uh, if you're curious about that, I am using the Open Track free head tra uh, face tracking software that allows me to uh, use my webcam to track my face and kind of convert that into moving around and looking around the. Uh, cab of the truck. Uh, for my controls, I am using the Logitech G Pro Flight Yoke System with the rudder pedals that come with it. Yes, I am fully aware that that's kind of ridiculous, but I don't have a steering wheel and I got tired of using my controller. I wanted something that was a little bit more re more reasonable and I had, this, uh, I had this thing that my wife bought me for, I think it was my birthday last year. And I haven't been really been using it very much, uh, even though I did start a flight, uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator series on the channel, so I'm, I'm using it a lot more now. But anyways, I was like, well, I might as well use it for that since I have it out, you know? It's at least sort of like a steering wheel, and I can continue to, I can, I can sort of steer it like a, like, sort of steer it like I would a wheel, and I can use the rudder, the brake parts, the brake part of the rudder pedals as kind of like gas and brake pedals for the truck. Very unintuitive to try to brake with your left foot when you've been uh, driving normally your whole life, but the rudder pedals are spaced way too far apart. Ooh, ooh, too fast. Spaced way too far apart for me to uh, try to drive it normally, and I also need both feet on the rudder pedals to keep the actual, you know, rudder axis from moving around as I'm trying to use the pedals, so it's very weird. Maybe at some point if these uh, trucking videos become popular enough, and I start making some uh, making some real money on the channel, I may invest in a steering wheel setup with a shifter and all that cool stuff. Start building up a really cool thing and uh, put it on camera for you guys so you can see it. Now, I know that that would be a direct copy of what Jeff Faviano is doing over on his channel, but, you know, you do what works. <laughs> it's not that you, you can't really steal a format. You can steal content, but you can't really steal a format. If, if a format works and people like to watch it, hey, there's a million would you like to win money shows out there and nobody nobody accuses them of stealing the idea. Okay. So I'd like to get some cruise control set up on here, but the roads here are just really they have some really sharp turns and I'm not confident that I could take them at 75 kilometers an hour. I mean, I guess we're kind of on the main road now, so let's go ahead and get the let's go ahead and get the cruise control turned on and then hopefully I can get some fine control over this and not tip everything over. But I mean, look, this is a little fast for 75 kilometers an hour, it feels like. But maybe it's just a, maybe it's just me driving the truck that... Maybe it's just me driving the truck. I don't know. Um, make sure our lights are on. Don't want to get any tickets from the peep, from the popo because they want to give me... Because they don't like that my lights are not on yet. can count on one hand the number of times that I've said the words, the word popo. <laughs> I don't know why that popped into my head. That is not part of my vernacular. You know, I don't, I don't really talk like that. But you know what? I feel like my mirrors 
I don't know. I thought I adjusted these. Like, didn't I adjust these last time? Or was that in my American Truck Simulator? I don't remember. I feel like I adjusted these before. I, should, I don't know. I just double check and make sure. Because I, I just want to see this, 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 barely see the side of my truck. Because I don't need to see my actual truck. I just need to see the cars and stuff that are next to my truck. So. I thought I had fixed that already. But when you're driving two different two different versions of the same soft... Whoa, we need to slow down. When you're, driving, when you're doing two different versions... Okay, so we definitely need to uh, fix that mirror. You always have to put this out a little further. Because once you get to your regular perspective... There we go. That That's more reasonable, I guess. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I keep doing this, but I just want to make sure that I have really good mirror placement so that I, when I, I can just glance over there and see what I need to see. All right, yeah, that's good. I, I, you still need to be able to see the trailer so you can compare where th where the other vehicles are to where you, where your trailer is, but I don't, I don't need to see copious amounts of my trailer back there because I know it's back there and I know it's not going anywhere and, you know, I don't need to stare at it when I'm looking at my mirror. The purpose of the mirror is to make sure that you're not going to hit anything and, you know, you want as wide of a field of view when it comes to that as you can. You know, this realistic headlights thing isn't exactly blowing my skirt up because, you know, it's starting to get dark and I do have, I'm pretty sure I have my headlights on. Yeah, my headlights are on and they're not showing yet because it's still too, it's, I guess it's still too bright out as far as the game is concerned to activate that function yet. That's something that probably should be fixed by the developers. Your headlights should come on. Your headlights should just be on whether it's dark or not. And they should they should render on the ground and then just the sunlight should overpower that rendering, not be something where you can't see because of this. This is ridiculous. I should the, the ground in front of me should be highlighted because it's very dark and shadowed. All right, enough complaining. I'm sorry. I just, I tend to be a perfectionist when it comes to things like this, and it bugs me when, you know, it bugs me when developers put so much time and effort into all of this stuff, and then they miss the little details like that. Like, it doesn't occur to them as they're driving that, hey, you can't see the, it's, it's getting dark and you can't see, and the headlights aren't turning on yet. So, yeah, why aren't those headlights there? If I drive into a tunnel, I should be able to see headlights, whether it's daytime or not. So this is telling us about two hours and 30 minutes in game time, which I'm guessing is probably another probably 10 minutes. Kind of depends on speed limits and all that kind of stuff. But as I said in my American truck video that I did earlier, I'm not really trying to rush these anymore. We'll, we'll we'll get done what we can get done in a reasonable amount of time without driving like a jackass. So, you know, there's always that. <laughs> when I'm playing on my own time, most of the careers that I've done, I turn I turn the financial penalties off for things like speeding and crashing and all of that stuff, and I just drive like a maniac. Ooh, okay. I thought that was I, I wasn't sure how rough that was going to be. Get ourselves back up to speed and on towards our destination. Looking forward to upgrading our cab to be more of like, in both of these games, I'm looking forward to upgrading our cabs to be more of like a sleeper design because it's just it's kind of ridiculous to be driving around like this and what, you're just sleeping in your, you're sleeping in your driver's seat? <laughs> I understand that the, the day cab models are the cheapest models and that's what you're intended to start out with, but it's like, uh, Really, really kind of not realistic to be doing over-the-road trucking in a day cab. I know they used to do it back in the day, you know, in the early days of trucking when there were no when there was no such thing as a sleeper cab. But we're in the year 2024 now. Come on, <laughs> let's make let's make these used trucks all sleeper cabs because when you're buying your first truck, you're you're going over the road. You're not just driving around your hometown. Yeah, this is the only part about using a, a yoke is that look at all this correction I'm having to do because I end up overcorrecting and, and it's, there's no way for me to set it up in a way that feels realistic. Because the yoke had even with the even with my dead zone in the soft in the the trucking software turned all the way down, there's just a physical dead zone in the yoke before it starts sensing things. So I have to turn it, you know, I have to turn it a little bit before it. it it's just a little wiggle. There's just a little wiggle room in the physical part of the yoke 
before it'll before the, before the actual sensor will start picking up that you've crossed over into a uh, or you've crossed over into it starting to actually detect what you're doing. And I'm sure they did that because of the physical requirements of inside and all that. But it's just it's a little frustrating when you're trying to make fine-tuned movements, but you have to move you have to first move the yoke a fair amount of distance, and then all of a sudden you have high, you have a high amount of sensitivity. It's just it's not intuitive. It's not intuitive, and there's no real good way that I can think of to fix that other than you know getting a steering wheel. slow down to 80 here. Well, we only have 80 kilometers left. I still don't think we're going to have time for another load, so this might end up being a very short video. But as I said, I don't want to rush things, and I really don't want these videos to be any more than about 30 minutes long, and realistically, we don't have time to cram another one in, especially when we have to go and load the truck up and it's inevitably going to be another like 200 plus kilometer drive and I mean I guess if there was a short one available maybe we could cram a, like a really short one in but I'm not really trying to max out my max out my video length I, I want to uh, I want to I want to make quality time videos and if I feel like I'm cramming things in, I'm going to be more focused on how long it's taking me to get it done and less focused on just, you know, chilling here, driving the truck, talking about interesting things, hopefully. I mean, I know, uh, you know what? I got to fix that. Give me just a second. I'm switching the key binds for my bright lights to something that's on my, um, on my yoke so that I can easily switch that without having to use the keyboard. Okay, where's my, there we go. Okay, seriously? Oh, it's that automatic lights thing. It automa I think it automatically turns them on when you're off when you're approaching another vehicle. But then it doesn't turn them back on when you're done. So I guess that's supposed to be like a sensor. Oh, it did turn it back on. Oh, okay, so that does work. I did not I did not realize that that actually worked. So that's going to be annoying when there's a bunch of traffic, but then it automatically turns it on and I don't have to remember to turn it off and I don't have to have oncoming traffic flashing their lights at me because I didn't turn my high beams off. That's a cool feature. I like that. I have to imagine that's probably a real system on cars now. They have light sensors that can detect where whether uh, whether there is oncoming traffic and it will automatically dim your headlights for you. Which is, you know, it's that's something that you should have in a car. I think that's a, I think that's a very good quality of life thing to have available, so that you know, when you're driving in darker areas, if you forget you have your bright lights on, it automatically cuts them off, so you're not blinding people as you drive down the road. That's definitely one of the most irritating things about driving a car, of driving any vehicle when you're driving at night, is these jerks who have these really bright LED headlights, and then they turn their brights on because they need to see, but they don't care about the fact that. As they drive in front of you with their bright lights on, they're blinding you and, you know, making it much more likely that you're going to get into a crash because, oh no, now my night vision is completely destroyed because you wanted to see another hundred feet. I don't know. I have a, I have a very low tolerance for traffic these days. You know, the older I get, the less I have patience for traffic. And fortunately, for the past year, I pretty much haven't had to deal with it. I've been... Uh, I haven't had to drive anywhere, so it's been it's been a, it's been a nice break from having to deal with the jerks on the road. All right, I'm gonna go get this load dropped off, and uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, the the character needs to rest anyway, so yeah. I'm just gonna go ahead get this load dropped off, and then we'll uh, and then we'll be done. Oh, <laughs> big, big, big double lane, big double divided highway there. My bad. Man, with that automatic headlight feature, I don't know why you would ever turn your high beams off. Just leave them on all the time and it'll just automatically adjust for you. Wish I had that for my. I wish I had that for my car. Automatic headlights. 
Heck yeah. I mean, automatic headlights have been a thing for a while, but automatic dimming of your headlights? That's an amazing feature. Am I the only person who thinks that automatic Ooh. headlights is a is a uh, deciding factor into whether you would buy a car? Because seriously, ever since they came out with it, I won't buy a car that doesn't have automatic headlights. <clears throat> it's just not something I want to have to think about. Especially when you switch from one from a car that has it to a car that doesn't, and then you forget to turn your headlights on, and you're driving in a city that, ha that is heavily lighted, and you end up driving around for like 20 miles not having your, your lights on because you didn't realize you didn't turn them on. So, yeah, automatic headlights are a must for me at this point. I'm not I'm not interested in any vehicle that doesn't have it. All right, so I'm not it looks like they want us to go up and around. I'm having a hard time kind of telling where exactly we're going because we can't see enough of the map yet, but it looks like the street we we're on is going to swing around, but we do need to get over to the left. So, let's get out past this truck over here that's to our left and uh it doesn't look like he's going to give us the room we need. I'm going to have to speed a little bit to make it happen. Oh, oh. Well, or we could do that. <laughs> uh, the brakes didn't quite work as strongly as I was expecting them to. And then I had that oh crap moment where I, I just I had too much indecision to act the way I should have. So, yeah, that happened. Okay, well, at least we're on the road that we need to be on. And the damage we took wasn't really that bad. So, you know, sorry for breaking your stuff, Cologne, but, you know, it's just a game. <laughs> I am trying to be somewhat realistic with this stuff, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to lose my mind over a couple of little incidences here and there. All right, we need to get in here. We need to find the place where we're supposed to drop off this trailer. Looks like it's going to be all the way. Oh, yeah, okay. So we're going to have to pull up over here and then kind of cut it pretty hard to get it into where we're trying to go to. So We may need to swing around and just back it in. So, yeah, I think we're going to do that. Let's swing it around all the way, and then we'll just back it in straight. Yes, yes, we know I'm tired. We're working on it. Okay, we'll get the head tracking turned off. Kick ourselves out the back of the truck here. Get ourselves turned off far enough that hopefully I can actually see the parking spot. Eh, a little more. A little bit of uh, blind backing here, but I don't like to swap to the mirror too much because it's just a pain. Should be able to get this parked kind of like that. There we go. All right, well, hopefully you guys had lots of fun. Be sure to click that like button so the YouTube algorithm knows that you did and sends the video out to more viewers because uh, the more people we have along for the ride, the more fun it's gonna be, and that can only happen with viewer participation. If you're not subscribed already, be sure to do that as well so that when the next video comes out, it will show up in your feed and you'll be able to watch the video as soon as it becomes available. For those of you who can't wait, be sure to click that join button down below. Uh, early access to my videos along with several other perks are available for those of you who choose to take a more active role in supporting this channel, and that support is much appreciated. So again, thank you very much for your time. I hope you guys had lots of fun. Be sure to come back for the next one, and I'll see you then.